Commissioner, if you could take us to the details of the case and exactly what has happened, the background of uh, Nikhil Gupta has been. Well, I think what is absolutely fascinating are some of the details which have emerged in this habeas corpus petition filed in the Supreme Court, uh, which we were just speaking about. Firstly, the allegations made by Nikhil Gupta are strong. He says that he'd emerged out of the airport at Prague uh, when he was put bundled into a, a black-coloured SUV by two or three people. There were other people in that car. Uh, and that SUV then, for a period of several hours, moved around the city of Prague while he was being questioned. Uh, after repeatedly asking the people who had held him who they were, uh, they said that they were American agents. He was subsequently put in detention. He says that for a period of 20 days, he was not allowed uh, any consular access. He says that consular access happened after a period of 20 days. Prior to that, he was not allowed uh, for a large period, a long period of time, uh, to make phone calls to his family. Uh, and it was only once his family was aware of this entire situation that the government of India, through the embassy in Prague, uh, was actually kept posted on what happened. And it was only then that they were able to give him consular access. There are other details as well. He says, for example, that there were blood tests uh, which had been conducted on him and that on the basis of these blood test results, he was told that he had certain communicable diseases on the basis of which he was kept in solitary confinement. Yet, he says that he's not been given uh, the blood test reports. He says he's been forced to eat beef and pork while being a vegetarian uh, and that he'd communicated this and that he was told that, you know, this is what you're going to get to eat and that that is against his religious beliefs. One of the points that keeps coming up over and over again in this petition uh, is that he was not allowed for a large period of time to actually contact his family, contact lawyers, anybody who was, uh, was concerned. He was actually told by Czech authorities in the jail where he's currently being held uh, that the, uh, the international calling facility uh, did not exist. Subsequently, of course, he was able, as I understand it, uh, to be able to get into his family. Uh, get in touch with his family. One final point over here is that he says that he was told that there is an Interpol red corner alert for him. He says he disputes this because at Delhi airport where he left, there was no effort at stopping him. In, uh, in Turkey where he went, there was no effort at stopping him. He actually cleared immigration at Prague airport and it was only after that that there were these people who put him into this SUV and questioned him. He says that he doesn't buy the argument that there was an Interpol red corner alert for him. He says that he's been caught in the middle of politics, as it were, between India and the United States. And bring us those updates on this particular story. That's, of course, uh, the background on what the case exactly is.